So a few years back, I went to visit a friend in the north of Italy. He lives near Alba in the Piedmont, and I absolutely love this region. They not only make one of the best wines in the world, but they also have exquisite food. And so what we do is we go from one restaurant to the other, and, and one of the dishes that I absolutely love is this pasta with truffle. And I don't know if you ever had this dish, but what happens is you sit at the restaurant, you get a plate with just the pasta on it, and then the waiter comes and has this little tool and actually flakes this truffle onto to, to the dish. And this gives you a smell, actually, of this mushroom before you can actually eat uh, the, the pasta, and this combination is absolutely uh, gorgeous. Now, this experience was so strong in my life that I wanted to be able to reproduce it at home. So I told my friend, let's go to the market and buy uh, these truffles. So we, we get to the village market where there were many stands that would sell them, but there were so many that I was a bit confused and overwhelmed. And on top of it, I didn't have the little tool to do this at home. So I actually found an, on the same market a stand that sold this olive oil which actually contains the, the taste and smell of uh, the truffles. So I thought, great, I take this home. I then cooked for a few weeks at home and I was very happy until the chemist in me actually uh, told me I should understand how they extract the, the, the taste out of truffle and put it into the oil. And there I was shocked because actually most of these truffle oils are not made from truffle they actually have petroleum extracts in them. And what shocked me is not so much that you can make petroleum smell or taste good. It's more the fact that you actually, how deep these petroleum molecules went in our daily lives, and also how ignorant we are of where they are to be found. So petroleum really has two faces. One is in the spotlight, that is the energy face. It, it really, it's known by everyone. Everybody has used it once in their lives. You fill it in your car, you know how it smells and all this, and actually you know that it's linked to a CO2 footprint. And this is extremely important because I believe that it's this understanding of the customer that actually helped the decrease in utilization. So if you look at the projection of uh, the oil use in mobility, you see a major expected decrease uh, through uh, electrification of mobility and alternative fuels. Now, oil also has a more dark side, what I call the dark side of crude, which are these petrochemicals. Here we talk about plastics, we talk about synthetic clothing, we talk about a pharmaceutical inks, paints, uh, things you put on your skin like cosmetics or perfumes. And these products, they also have the same um, footprint linked to them as the energy does, but people are not really aware of it. And actually this CO2 is also released in the atmosphere, either directly if you think of fertilizers or perfumes, or at the end of life, if you think of plastics and uh, synthetic garments that are mainly burnt uh, when they're not used anymore. So this petrochemical side or dark side of the crude might be the smaller fraction of the global oil usage, but the numbers are still astronomic. So the International Energy Agency has estimated that 13 million barrels of oil go into these materials every day. If you convert this to uh, CO2, that corresponds to 4 million tons of CO2 that is potentially released every day into the atmosphere. Now the story gets even worse because we don't see any reduction in the consumption. And actually we expect this consumption to increase by 7 million barrels of oil additional to what we consume today by 2050. Now this 2050 is an interesting date because on the political side, this is the date where a lot of countries claim to reach carbon neutrality. Carbon neutrality is actually when a country is not emitting any CO2 anymore. 
Switzerland has clearly stated this in August last year, that this is the target. The European Union has a number of tools in place, like the Green Deal, that uh, are aiming towards this uh, 2050 target. And just last December, Ursula von der Leyen said that it's the man on the moon moment for Europe. Now, this is not only happening in politics, but also in the industry. Here I took two examples of big fragrance and flavor groups that have internal programs to completely remove the fossil carbons from their products. Now, we have a clear dilemma here. On one hand, you have actually an expected increase in the consumption of oil for materials. And on the other hand, you have clear targets to become completely neutral. So how to bring these two things together? Well, the good news is science has a, a few uh, alternatives or a few options to do that. Let me guide you through them. So there are three main options that we can go for. The first one is what I call swipe it under the carpet. So basically, society continues to use oil but we develop technologies that can capture the CO2 from the atmosphere and we literally pump it into the ground. I tried to do this with dust at my place. Well, I can tell you it didn't work for very long. Another option that would also be based on continuing consuming petroleum is a reborn from ashes. So meaning that you use the petroleum you capture again the CO2 from the atmosphere, but instead of putting it under your carpet, you actually upgrade it to similar molecules uh, that you had in the original petroleum. This would allow you to close the loop, but the problem there is you need a lot of energy, and the even bigger problem is that a lot of that technology is far from being developed enough to meet the timeline. And the third option is what I call plant a tree. This is actually completely moving away from petroleum and using biomass as a source for these materials. The benefit of using biomass is that trees are actually capturing CO2 by a so-called photosynthesis mechanism to build their own core. So if you use wood, you basically include in a larger circle that is already existing and that trees are using every day. Now the question is, how are you going to convert a tree into petroleum? Well, trees and petroleum have actually a common past. Most people think that petroleum is liquefied dinosaurs, which is not completely wrong, but as there are much more trees than dinosaurs, uh, oil or crude oil is most probably mainly made out of old trees. So a tree is made out of three main components. It's cellulose and hemicellulose fibers, and they are really glued together by uh, a so-called lignin polymer. Now, this material got trapped millions of years back into the ground, and what happened is it really decomposed into the liquid, liquid we know as petroleum today. And the petrochemical industry now is extracting this from the ground, separating the different components and uh, selling them on the market. Now, what I want to show you here is really that different uh, molecules have also different price on the market. And this is a way for the petroleum industry to actually subsidize the different fractions. Now, if you look at what happens with wood, well, the paper industry today is actually converting millions of tons of uh, wood into mainly one single fraction, that is cellulose. What happens to the two other fractions is that because it's so difficult to break this matrix apart, they happen to actually agglomerate or, or condense, uh, as we say, in, in the chemical world. Now, these condensed materials are very hard to break apart and uh, limit, basically, the ability to use wood uh, for a number of products that are made out of petroleum today. So, the person that will manage to actually 
open up these uh, molecules or even better prevent these uh, condensation or agglomeration to happen will really open up the uh, possibilities or the abilities uh, of society to valorize wood. And I'm here today because my peers at EPFL together with my team uh, with whom I co-founded a startup actually exactly developed this. So we have a chemistry now that is able to prevent uh, the agglomeration of, of these materials and we can nicely extract petrosimilars from uh, wood. Now the path forward is really to implement this. So the science is here, the politics has really set the direction and the time frame and now we need the support of the economy to take action and also responsibility. And the purpose of this all is really to prevent um, the CO2 to be hidden everywhere, including in the truffle oil that you put on your pasta. Thank you for your attention.